Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Juan Melinda Pereira. Platform Sutra, it is, it is interesting to see how Dhyana and Samadhi are explained. Purity has neither shape nor form, but some people go so far as to invent the form of purity and treat it as a problem for solution. We all love inventing purity and rejecting the impureness in us as well as in others. We never think that this pureness is just another delusion. This safe place we make in ourselves and are sometimes proud of it. Quinn calls it the tainted merits. We keep building layer and layer on top of each other and all it takes is a moment of anger or hate or an impure thought to burn it up in a fraction. And we hate it when something from the past or present do that to us. And sometimes we come to hate ourselves too. Hunan says our nature is intrinsically pure and it is always there, whether in impureness with anger or in an artificial pureness of happiness with good thoughts. We fail to see this when we are angry or upset, so much so that when impure thoughts come, we are moved and carried along. But our true nature is there always in every one of us. So the Sutra says, since we all have this essence that is intrinsically pure, there is no need to dwell with an outside pureness or impureness, and that we should not be shaken with others' faults and indifferences, good or evil, merits or demerits. We cannot dwell on duality that obscures such so dhyana, according to Hunen, is to be free from attachments to all objects. And this freedom brings inner peace, which is samadhi. He who is able to keep his mind undisturbed, irrespective of circumstances, has attained samadhi. So here, ultimately what he says is the total freedom from attachment to the mental states. That is, it is okay for impureness to occur and that it should be allowed to come and go. This samadhi is not samatha samadhi like in the, like the jhanas. Samatha samadhi is shakeable. Just get out of the train and stand on the platform and let them all go. All compartments just going one after the other, but you don't get in pay any of it irrespective of what the train is carrying. But we all love to get into compartments of pure thoughts, the tainted merits. So the Sutra says that this freedom from discrimination, distinction between subject and object gives us samadhi, a state that cannot be easily mute. Because that state which you can abide in, or leave off is not the great samadhi. No wonder Bahi really got what Buddha was saying. Whenever you see a form, simply see. Whenever you hear a sound, simply hear. Whenever you smell an aroma, simply smell. Then you will not exist. Whenever you do not exist, you will not be found in this world, another world, or in between. That is the end of suffering. It's the same thing. As bodhisattvas, we need this type of unmovable samadhi because of our bodhicitta. We cannot afford to make judgments and choices. Our vow is to save all beings, everyone. It is interesting to see who all these beings are in the Platform Sutra. It says, 
And who are these sentient beings within our mind? They are the delusive mind, the deceased deceitful mind, the evil mind, and such like minds. All these are sentient beings. In the Loka Sutra, in the Samyutta Nikaya, the Buddha explains the origination of the world and the ending of the world is within us. In fact, from Sutra points at the Dharma is within us. It is like a mirror that forces us to look at ourselves. Within our essence of mind, these three kaya of Buddha are to be found and they are common to everybody. Being in face to face with the essence of mind is called pure dharma kaya of Buddha and to take refuge in ourselves is being constantly on the alert for our own mistakes. The non-dualistic nature of the true nature is the Sambhogakaya of Buddha. The act of Prajna is the Nirmayakaya of the Buddha. We all have the three Kayas in us and we all have the capacity to realize the essence of mind. The essence of mind is free from yanas, the vehicles. The Patron Sutra Buddha says, uh, the Hunan says, Buddha preached the doctrine of three vehicles and also that of supreme vehicle. As I do not understand this, will you explain this? The description of, the, of these four vehicles does not exist in the Dharma itself, but in the differ differentiation of people's minds. So these yanas and vehicles are all our labels and discriminations that we have placed depending on the capacities of people. To see, to hear, and to recite the sutra is a small vehicle. To know the dharma and to understand its meaning is the middle vehicle. To put the dharma into actual practice is the great vehicle. To understand thoroughly all dharmas, to have absorbed them completely, to be free from all attachment, to be above phenomena is to be in the position of nothing, is the supreme vehicle. So no discriminations, no labels, just the essence of mind at all times in a state of thusness. Because time is very limited and life is too short. Thank you.